Mercedes AMG Interview Lounge. Katie Couric is here. Yeah. yeah. Hi, everyone. Look, you so know what? nice to see you and when, Max. The hi, Max. Mauser. When, when we launch a new podcast on iHeart, we've got to invite the superstar in. So, Katie, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's called Next Question with Katie Couric, investigating the people, movements, and issues shaping today's world. Yeah, and I'm very excited about it. Uh, two episodes have dropped so far. One on the impact of violent misogynistic pornography on people's perception of sexual relationships. Right. Really, really interesting. And the second was on CBD. You know, what is it? Does it work? How can you tell? What is the science behind it? The third episode that comes out tomorrow I just uh, recorded was an interview with Ronan Farrow about his new book, Catch and Kill. Oh, yeah, wow. a few people have read that. Yes, uh, <laughs> that's been getting a little bit of attention, but we are also doing a bunch of other stories on on vaping, on online radicalization of white supremacists. Um, but gonna... we have some lighter topics wow. like <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> Sorry, wait. Jennifer Garner um, is is uh, a great podcast. I had a wonderful conversation with her. She is my Instagram girl crush. Love her oh. and. Um, so we're really we're we're really diving into issues that I care about, I'm curious about, that I want to understand better. And as you know, radio is a great format for uh, longer conversations. And uh, so I'm really excited to be doing this with iHeart. You know what? This is the thing. I, I've been doing radio my entire career, and but of late, I've been doing more network stuff at NBC. There's, and there's always a timer timing down. You always only have like a few seconds. Oh, to, it's so frustrating. You never really can get into the meat and potatoes of what any of these topics are about. Right. It's and true. So, and Katie, you've you've been doing network TV for several years now. <laughs> for centuries, Elvis. I know. Is that what you were wanting to say? But look, okay, look, for instance, last time you were here, we played uh, we played the sound of you and Bryant Gumbel talking about internet. Yes. Allison, what is internet? What is internet? <laughs> it, was, it almost sounded like, like you were uh, Russian. Yes, but, but now, that was 19 1994, Elvis. I know, but, but okay. Looking back to those days versus what you can do now with your own podcast and with your when you do series for uh, for uh, streaming online or v- with a video and everything. Right. Look at what you can control now. It's really from your heart more than someone else writing it for well, you. Well, it's all about disintermediation, right? You That's know, such a big the, word, Katie. No, but it's such a good <laughs> word because it's a direct relationship with viewers, consumers, listeners, whomever. And you don't have people who are gatekeepers anymore. And there's a lot of great things about that and a lot of terrible things about what, that. What are the terrible things about not having well, gatekeepers? Well, I mean, you think of, well, I think that they're, you know, I think it's the debate about free speech. You have online radicalization. You have chat groups with white supremacists, you know, plotting their next violent act. You have opinions without portfolio. I think it's debased civil discourse in our country in many ways, uh, led by someone who uses Twitter sort of 24-7. So I think, you know, for every great aspect of of letting people have a voice, which I think is so wonderful. I mean, think how limiting it was, Elvis, back in the day. Oh, absolutely. So few people could get into the pipeline. So few people could have an opportunity to practice the craft of journalism or interviews. And now it's I think it's it's democratized the media landscape in a way that we've never seen before. But of course, as I mentioned, that comes with some pitfalls. I sound very intelligent. You do. You do. You do. <laughs> but you know, what, and, and you know what I'm getting from this is, you know, a, a connection, a, a real true circular connection uh, is possible now. Back in the day, it was the network told me to say this. I said it. And right. now you will you will eat it. Well, I, also, I always had a lot of freedom, honestly, not right. not as much on, in the evening news, because that's 22 minutes to, to tell people what's happening that day. Day. On the Today Show, I felt like I I did have a little more freedom. What was the most frustrating and continues, I think, to frustrate people in television news is how the limited time you have to explore a topic. You know, it's gotten shorter and shorter as people uh, people's attention spans have been truncated. And I think, you know, I love having these deep, rich conversations and to really kind of unpack important things and give people and I think people are craving it Elvis oh, absolutely. I do don't yeah. you all I mean absolutely. I think people yeah. don't I, they, they're they inundated in by a tsunami of sort of just bits and pieces the and to is, connect no, the dots we, it, we are connecting with each other now it's a two way communication because the social media we didn't have that before right with social which media, I love actually we can actually not only spend more time talking about different perspectives we can also have more time 
con- having a conversation with total strangers about what they're feeling about it. It is awesome. This is what's great about what we're doing now. I know. Let's hear it for us. Yay! Yay! Us! Well, it's really, let's hear it for the people, <laughs> right? It has given power back to the people. I'll put, an, an in, you know, on Instagram, which I love, and it's sort of like my, my own little personal network. I'll put a video of Nancy Pelosi talking about launching the impeachment inquiry, and I'll just want to hear what people have to say. And one thing, you know, we do live in a bubble. We probably have very like-minded friends, but it's interesting to get different perspectives. And I can't tell you how often people DM me with, have you read this book? Have you thought about doing a story on this? Yeah. And I have the most thoughtful, intelligent, engaged followers, most. And it's really, it's. I just feel very connected to them in a way that I never really connected with. I, I didn't feel connected with viewers of the Today Show in that kind of uh, direct, intimate way. Well, you couldn't. There was no, no mechanism to allow They would that. write letters, and Nancy Fields, Willard Scott's assistant, would open it and say, Katie, this guy thinks your hair looks like a ski slope for the Dutch <laughs> Sparrow. And I'd be like, thanks, Nancy. Can you put that in the circular file? And so uh, I'm looking at Katie Couric's Instagram now. I mean, you do have a lot of thought-provoking. I can see where the story is developing. With, but here's a picture of Katie with a meatloaf. This is great. <laughs> no, you know, this I don't have a, I don't, Katie what? in her garden. <laughs> That's nice. See, yes, that was a New York Times piece that was written about me that was very, very nice. But let and me say what else is great about Instagram. And it, you, I do these pajama grams often in the morning where I give people the headlines. Right. I'm in my pajamas, and I'm just saying, hey, here's what's happening because I have a newsletter that our company puts out every right. morning that curates the news and also gives original content. Sign up for it at katiecurric.com, everybody. And um, so sometimes, like, I'm just in my pajamas talking to people. I mean, how weird is but that? What but, this how does, though, is that? <laughs> but what this does, it takes you off of this uh, level of smart person giving me news and perspective now we know more about you away from that story mm-hmm. and it helps us understand why your your perspective is what it is because we see you as a human right and not just a, a really smart person well, talking i think on people TV. want that unvarnished of course. Yeah. People, and people also like to see into your everyday life and right. what katie couric is doing not just giving us the news like what do you do in your personal life like you know? i'm trying to stay away from sugar but i just ate three almond joys <laughs> right see? Yes. Like that. People love <laughs> their lives. By the and way, it, hold on. Are yes. they a sponsor of ours? I don't know if we I'll enjoy. Send them an invoice. <laughs> Gandhi is a great a great yeah. example of someone who lets it all out on social media. All of her opinions are there, and people, you know, she doesn't. She, she's not winning winning you, a popularity contest. Do you sometimes. get many trolls? Do you get a lot of pushback? Oh, yeah. A lot. That's, that's that's hard sometimes, isn't it? How do you how do you handle that? So I think. I'm very fortunate that this has all happened as I've been an adult. I can't imagine what it would be like for kids who are dealing with this kind of stuff right now. I laugh. We talk about it all the time and just say, for the most part, people who are going out of their way to troll someone they don't know, they probably have an issue with themselves and there's something <clears throat> going true. on there. But I think people also really are not interested now in being attached to somebody that they find relatable versus, you know, for a long time, everyone was perfect and everybody looked perfect and everyone was always happy and always smiling. And every now and then you don't feel that way and you don't look that way. So a pajama gram is good or saying I'm having a bad day. It's okay. And I think that that, is great, and that's a good thing from social media. Or exactly. I don't have to use the aging app because I'm 62 people, and I'm okay with it. <laughs> exactly. Right? Remember that app where oh, you yeah. made yeah. your face all? Uh-huh. Did you guys use I, I it? I deleted that quickly. Well, yeah. apparently it made your information available to all sorts of malevolent people. Yeah, oh, lovely. Well. And yeah. I love I love being available to them, too. But, <laughs> but I, I think it's so great to have a different perspective on the person who's talking about what's in the news. I, mm-hmm. I, I want to know you and trust you as a human more than just a... A slick looking, just made up mm-hmm. network person. Right, with my and, purple sheath dress. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. At an okay. anchor desk or okay. something. By the way, just turning us on, Katie Couric is here. Next question with Katie Couric. It's an iHeartRadio podcast. It launched uh, earlier this month, right? Yes. yes. Um, there have been two episodes so far, and I just completed one with Ronan Farrow, which was really interesting. Of course, for me, having worked at NBC for almost 20 years, uh, to kind of unpack all of this stuff is. Uh, is 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 disturbing, fascinating, upsetting, um, confounding, and so uh, Ronan and I had a really, what I think is an important conversation about workplace culture, 
um, and what's been going on in some of these workplaces for far too long and, you know, how these stories have not come out for various reasons. And that's another level. I mean, look, there are the stories, the details that are just disturbing beyond belief, but there's also the story of him trying to put the story out. Yes. Well, that really is the focus of this fascinating book that he wrote. I mean, it's a real page turner. It's got, you know, intrigue and espionage and (laughs) corporate malfeasance and uh, obviously allegations of sexual assault. And it's, it's really, really interesting. You know what's great about this book? It's another situation where you can actually study how the news is fed to us. When you hear a newscast or see a newscast, you just sometimes automatically assume, "Oh, those are the facts." Right. Well, what are they not telling us? Yep. Like, who, what, what, what agenda is behind the people who keep some news away from us? So, if, so now when I watch the news on any network, I don't believe it at a hundred percent ever. Really? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what network it is. I just yeah. I unless think it's, have, unless I think it's, it's, it's CBS Sunday Morning, <laughs> which is my favorite show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think it's really important to be a critical thinker, especially in this day and age, in terms of the news you're getting. And to be, you know, will yourself to be an independent thinker. I think, you know, the bottom line is the news oftentimes, I think in almost all cases, is brought to you by corporate entities that are billion dollar industries that also have things to protect and assets to protect. And, you know, so I think that it's I think all information should be met with skepticism, healthy skepticism, but not complete cynicism, because there's so many great, hardworking journalists out there, Elvis. And it's <clears throat> so important that the First Amendment is alive and well. I and agree. People are held accountable and speak truth to power. And that's what they're doing right now. And they deserve our respect, admiration and appreciation. Um, but but I understand what you're saying at the same time as you have to be an educated consumer. And now because the media landscape is so bifurcated and opinions are now seeking seeping in so much into coverage, I think you just need to kind of really uh, have a a diverse news diet and be a critical thinker, if that makes sense. I wish they'd put more positive stories on the news. Everyone says that. I feel like I honestly will go a week and just turn the news, not watch the news at all, not listen, because it just, every time I turn on, it makes me so sad. Well, I think a lot of people are, you know, are trying to do that. I feel that way too. I feel very anxiety ridden. Yes. From the, uh, about what's happening in the world writ large, and I and it, and I feel like it does kind of permeate into my psyche. So you know, on our newsletter every day, we try to put an inspiring, positive, you know, story that's celebrating kindness or something because I do feel that it just it's so. I don't know. It's so defeating and deflating to be constantly bombarded with this stuff. At the same time, it's really important as an informed citizen that we're aware of all this stuff. But it's so relentless. Well, but as yeah. you said, a varied <laughs> diet. You know, you yeah. get it. You get it from different places, and then it'll help you make up your mind. Yeah. I, By the way, I want to talk about. <laughs> let's, sorry, let's, my throat is all that's okay. <laughs> craggy. It's, we, it's okay. Is that be, the word? Be, can be craggy. <laughs> craggy my is, face is craggy. My voice is No, it's oh, not. Stop it. <laughs> oh, you're right. Actually, I did a podcast about ageism. Is it the last socially acceptable ism in our culture? Oh. I think it's really, really interesting. I interviewed the accidental icon who is on Instagram, who's 66. She's a former university professor. And she gets out there and she is trying to change our image of what it means to be an older person. Because, hello, Elvis. Why are you pointing at me? <laughs> <laughs> the hell you, is that? Are you and I about the same age? Well, I don't know. Are I, you I'm younger a, than I am? I'm a little, just a, just, a, just a hair. Just a tad. I'm 55. You're 55. Oh, you're a youngster. No. <laughs> But let's you're talk, a youngster. Let's talk about a few other other topics that are on the podcast. Uh, you're, let's go into CBD. Yes. Because this is like the hot button. I know all right. That, are you all CBD users? Yes. yes. I'm and, all rubbed up right now. I'm you gut, eating gummies. Everybody in this room is a I, CBD user? I was against no? it for the longest time. Why? I said, no, not going to try it. No way. Blah, 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 blah. Worst back problems ever. And I swear to goodness, I cannot believe the difference it has made. Really? Yeah. The so what is your using, CBD product of choice? So it's Millie. Am I but is it a tincture? Oh, it's a um, the drop? one that you put underneath it's the tincture. Your tongue. Yeah, 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 they yeah. call it a tincture, which yeah, is sure. a very strange and difficult it's to say word. <laughs> tincture? And it's orange tincture. flavored. It's oh, really? Yeah. So do you take it before you go to bed? I actually take it in the morning and before bed. Wow. And it so makes you, a huge difference. Really? And, That's yeah. so interesting. And then Gandhi, do you don't think it's psychosomatic or pl- 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 placebo? I don't, I don't 
think so. I really don't. Because there were days where I felt like I couldn't even like walk straight that my right. back hurt so much. Now oh. she's doing great. But Gandhi and I, we've taken it to the next level. We don't even stop at CBD. We just smoke pot. Straight THC. <laughs> we, just eat, we just eat gummies. Yeah. Well, oh, that is, that, oh, so that's, well, that's a whole... Different. It's a whole different art. <laughs> That's another wax, podcast, right? I absolutely believe in healing powers of CBD. I yeah. feel like I've seen it work. It has worked for me. And I am not somebody who would buy into the placebo. Not that Danielle is either. Yeah. But I've tried different things. I mean, the CBD oil that I use, I use a different type than Danielle does. It'll knock you out if you're tired or yeah. even if you can't sleep. I've given it to my friends and they're like, yes. Finally I think slept the, all night. The, 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 one of the dilemmas is there needs to be much more research. I think it's incredibly exciting. It has so much promise. They're using it for uh, epilepsy. For, for childhood ep- epilepsy. There's a lot of research being done about how it can fight opioid addiction. Mm-hmm. I think the problem right now, though, it's completely unregulated and it's very hard to ascertain the amount of CBD in any given product if you're being ripped off, you know, what it can really do, how pure it is. So I think a lot of research and needs to be done in this whole arena, but I think it's super exciting, actually. And you learned, obviously, a lot doing this episode for yeah. your podcast for, on CBD. And I tried some. I fried my egg and CBD olive oil. Oh. I ate some of those gummies from Lord Jones, which I thought tasted like potpourri. I did not care for them. <laughs> um, and I tried the tincture, but I don't think I did it enough yeah. to really notice an effect. And I'm sort of a skeptic about these things anyway. Right. I think I kind of will myself. It's not going to affect me. Okay. But I think I should try it more because I do think it's been incredibly helpful what to did you so learn? many people. What was the big headline you learned coming out of that that episode About of your, talk, CBD? Your, your podcast? Yeah. Um, well, that it's really exciting, but a lot more research needs to be done. done. And I okay. feel like it depends on where you get it. Like you said, like some places just say it's in there and then they rip you off. Right. It's everywhere. So yeah. it's kind of buyer beware right now, but you know, do your homework, I yeah. think. I know we're running late, but I want to get into one other podcast episode, uh, your interview with Jennifer Garner. Now, uh, what a fantastic... Uh, uh, actress, first of all, but secondly, an entrepreneur beyond right. anything a lot of people give her credit for being. And, you know, we love to talk on our show about the side hustle. You may have a full time job at the hospital or in the accounting office, but you do have a side hustle where you, you start another business right. on the side. And, and then sometimes your side hustle turns into your full time work, yeah. right? So, so Jennifer Garner, I mean, a lot of people don't know how far she has taken her. her Entrepreneurial. Right. So she is uh, started or is, I guess, a, a co founder and of Once Upon a Farm, which is an organic baby food line. And they're also extending it to toddlers. So kids have healthy things to bring in their lunchbox. But what's so interesting is she and the CEO of Once Upon a Farm are making sure that underserved pe- kids can afford this and that it's a available to families under the WIC program, women's and infants and children. So they're having to go th- jump through major bureaucratic hoops to get it approved. But I think so far it's been approved in six or seven states. So it's very mission oriented. It's not just like, oh, I'm doing a lifestyle brand. She's really helping kids get the, you know, get the kind of food that they need because there are all sorts of problems with food deserts and income inequality. And she's just a really amazing person. I really like her. You know, I wonder, can anybody really be that nice? And, you know, the headline from that podcast, Elvis, is she is. Oh, yeah, wow. I love that. That's so Damn cool. It. I love that. That's <laughs> great. That. She is so, she's just such a, a great person through and through. And um, I love talking to her about this. She got interested, by the way, because she's incredibly committed to save the children. Mm-hmm. And she's done so much work in the area of rural poverty. She is the real deal. I Aww, love her. I love that. <laughs> so many different topics that you can go so deep with on uh, Next Question with Katie Couric, uh, an iHeartRadio podcast. We're so proud to have her under our umbrella. Oh, thank but you. But also, I want to I want to subscribe to the uh, to your your, your daily uh, yeah, p- do, pajama please. gram. What yeah, is it? Oh, well, oh, first too. of all, so you go to Instagram stories to see my pajama grams. I do oh, some, okay. I, some I, warning, I do some weird stuff on my stories. <laughs> love it. Good. But, um, and then the newsletter in general, you just go to katiecouric.com or you can text 474747 and just write Katie and you can sign up. Oh, my and God. It's, I, I think it's... Too well, much that's information. Good. Well, 474747 is just like eight years younger than you are. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, she's good. Wow. So, and I can do math. She is hey, good. I can subtract. See, you know what's so funny? Well. When we had Mariah Carey on, and he tried to bring up her age and how long we've known her and whatever, she didn't talk to you for how long? For, we, we didn't speak for five years. Yeah. That is so ridiculous. <laughs> there was, there was Listen, a crazy. I'm proud of my age, and I, you know, I earned every wrinkle and sag that I have. That's all <laughs> I'm I'm not seeing say. sags. I'm no. seeing wrinkles. You look fantastic. <laughs> I have one question about your pajama gram. Yes. At what time do you post this? Because that could make my job a whole lot easier. Well, you want we, to post I know. She can rip you off every day. You know headlines. what? I usually do it. Well, Julia, my social media uh, producer is here, and we usually do it around 7.38. Oh, can you do that earlier? Like yeah. Five? Do you want me to get up five? at 5? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No problem, Thank Gandhi. You. I will be here for you. <laughs> we'll work together. I should post it the night before and just pretend, <laughs> yeah. but I don't want to do then that. Then that won't be fresh. That won't, no. won't be it fresh won't enough. be fresh. Things You're right. Happen. So next question with Katie Couric, investigating the people movements and issues shaping today's world. It, it's so great to have you here. I'm and so, I always am so happy to be here with you all. It's one of my favorite shows to be on. Well, then, so thanks for having then me. Then never leave. Yes. <laughs> Say goodbye, Max. Say goodbye, Max. Bye, Max. Bye, Max. Thank you, Katie. Okay, Katie thanks, everyone. everybody. Great to see you.